So remember that. When you're trying to aspire for your dreams, up to you and your Lord God Savior to make it over those hurdles. So I believe right there. Take that with you. When, when you leave here, he said, that tall guy, he ain't talking about much, but he said, take the Lord with you. I want you to remember that. Just remember one thing. But I said, take the Lord with you. And when you try, when you try to make that achievement, remember, he's right there. I'm going to be brief, but we all can talk. And, 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 and Judge so said it right. We have a passion because we want to share. Someone shared this same situation in our lives. It's, it's our turn to give back to you. That's what we're doing. I sat in a chair just like that when I was growing up. When I was in Weaver High School, there was a leadership program that I went to. Someone paid for me to go to a leadership program. I always was called Boys State. 500 students from the state of Connecticut, all high school, they were the leaders from their high school. Someone said I was a leader from Weaver High School because I played basketball and football. I was the captain of all three. I was on student council and I had good grades. Did I underachieve? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did, but that's all right. I was still making grades enough to go to college to get a football scholarship at Virginia State University where I played four years, three, I'm sorry, three years as a tight end. So doing good things has its benefits, okay? Understand that. But going back to the leadership piece, I said, you know, let me do that. I sat there, I was in Groton, Connecticut, and New London at the Coast Guard Academy, sat there, there were 500 students, there were four, there were seven of them. We had a young brother, he was dynamite. Straight A student, I forgot what school, I, mean, I wish I had a Facebook page to catch up to him, but he was dynamite. He said, I want to run for death, he was about this big. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, he, and he was African American, he said, I want to be the first black governor. He said, you know what, we're going to make that happen. I said, we got some free time, we, we're going to meet, we're going to meet, we're going to organize. I know about politics because my mother was on city council. I got this. I'll be your campaign manager. <laughs> so I said, let's do this. So when they had their free time, I said, we're going to have an hour over here where all seven of us going to meet. We're going to meet, sit it down, and plan for you to become governor. Now, you have the qualifications to be governor, or you're front. He had qualifications. Straight, honor society, national honor society. I'm like, oh, OK. All right, we got a qualified candidate to run for governor for Boys State in 1979. Some of y'all want to eat boom. 1979, that was in high school. So I said, let's do it. So I said, what can you do? You got to go out in politics, right? You got to, first of all, you got to get a platform. Put the platform together, all right? Let's go out and make this happen. Now, I'm in a certain area. I'm going to tell all my friends, my friend is running for governor. Well, who is your friend? Well, let me tell you about my friend. So we went on. He lost the governorship by two votes. That is first African-American candidate to run for Boys State since I was there. And that's a big thing. Now, we got together. Take what you learned from Boys State when you're in high school, just correlated to now. We all got together when Barack Obama said, we want to run, we had a qualified candidate. We knew somebody who knew what we were doing, what we were about. He was there, he was performing. We got together, we met, we strategized, we platformed, and we became the first African-American president. I was, so when I heard about Barack Obama, like that's a no-brainer for me, because I was doing that in high school. Leadership, I started a leadership program, I'm changing, I'm going fast, I'm going real fast, keep up with me, I know I'm talking a little fast, keep up with me. I started a leadership program because of that. This is our third year, we were on CNN, Anderson, Anderson Cooper 360 because of the leadership program that we had. That young man back there spoke at our leadership program. We have a couple people that are in this leadership program. We have a conference coming up at the end of the month. Sorry, young ladies, it's all for young men at this point. I'm about to tap on the shoulder. <laughs> I'm about to tap on the shoulder. So, I'm gonna leave some flyers for that particular program. And uh, there's more about it. There's one last quick little story. Brothers made decisions that they're not happy about early on. Come down to New Haven and, and, and play some ball. It was tough back then. But we played ball and we ran out of there. Cross Hill House. Yeah, I'm from Wayne. You know I know. I know you know. It. <laughs> Get run home. Get run home. But it was all about how can you better yourself. So can you make a decision? And I had two parents in my household. 
I had a father who didn't play. Six to three, didn't play. I'm, I'm, a four, I'm the youngest of four boys, all right? So I had three older brothers who were athletes, who were academic strong, didn't play. So I had a good example. I had role models. I was then, okay? I had people in the community to help me. So make a long story short, a little boy from Hartford, Connecticut, Weaver High School, went to Virginia State University, kept his nose clean, came back to Hartford, started working for a great Hartford Chamber of Commerce for a program helping out young people, and the program ran, money ran loose after five years, there was no funding. The FBI was looking for African American candidates at that time, it's back in 1992. And there was a process, and there, was a, there was a group out of uh, New Haven that was going around, the, going around the state looking for qualified, qualified candidates. Well, someone tapped me on my shoulder and says, you know what? You make some good decisions in life. You need, you need to look at this FBI thing for a minute. I was about to get laid off. I said, you know what? I don't have no job. <laughs> I look pretty good right now. <laughs> look, I got kids. So I said, you know what? I don't know. I was never a cop. You know, Got people in my family that are policemen, that kind of thing. I'm like, well, let me try the cop thing. I was in shape, they look for athletes, they look for people who are intelligent, they speak pretty decent. Let me try this. Went down to an interview down in New Haven, federal building. Went up in there, only African American man. I said, right, let me sit down and take the test. All right, let me take the test. Woo. So I got to take the test. People getting up, leaving out, they get up early and walk out, they all done. So I'm walking, I'm doing like <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like the fourth one at the end, right? Everybody go, I'm like me and four, three other people sitting down the looking out there. <laughs> so I get up turning it, I'm like, oh, okie dokie, here you go. <laughs> and, and I get a phone call about a month later, so you've been selected. You're almost like in that class. <laughs> I guess I did study a little bit, guys. That's the first step. Next step is I go take a physical.
come back. Come on. Don't stop on 